All right, kid, you're making us look bad. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, we're taking a look at the McFarlane Toys My Hero Academia Series 2 Todoroki, Uraraka, and Kirishima. Now, you guys know the deal here. This was a case of kick-ass looking action figures making me go back and watch the series and then getting so engulfed in the series that I had to have all the action figures because man just kick-ass show kick-ass figures and right now we are completely spoiled when it comes to my hero academia and the beautiful thing about that is there's something for everybody if you're looking for good but affordable options there's a line for you. If you don't mind spending all the money to get beautiful renditions, there's that option. There's options that are cheap enough that where you can customize together and get the version you want. What I'm saying here is what I say a lot, options are good. Looking at the packaging, it's what we saw with series one, big window showing the figure itself. And then, you know, the character art down here at the bottom. Yellow packaging really stands out. On the side, just their names, McFarlane Toys, Funimation. On the back, very basic, shows the character from the show. It shows the other two figures in the series, 22 moving parts. On the other side, essentially just a My Hero Academia logo. On the top, nice art from the show. On the bottom, legalese, warnings, copyrights, UPC. But let's get these open and see what's going on here and I think we're doing Kirishima first. Have the tray inside with the figure and then as usual basic stand. It's still locked in there. Just a flat stand, My Hero Academia printed on it, one little foot peg. And getting it out of the package, I, I think I like it a little bit better than I expected to. Not that I don't like the character, but the design is basically some gears around the shoulder, some pointy hair, a ripped up rug around his waist, and then the baggy pants and boots of course. But when it comes to those design elements, I think they're done really well here. The gears are a nice crisp sculpt. They could have been softened up a little bit, rounded the edges, but they're not. They're nicely sculpted. And then the strap thing coming down and around, I think just to add a little bit of dynamic look to the bare chest. I kind of wish it laid down a little bit more, but then it would have gotten in the way of articulation. Speaking of getting in the way of articulation, this does slightly traffic cone it, but you can flip it up and about, and it gives it kind of an action feel, and then you can get full articulation in the legs. It's a nice ripped look coming down and around. There's some fabric wrinkles, then the big red R on the belt buckle. The pants are a very nice baggy sculpt, and that's achieved by hiding the double knee behind the sculpt, which works out okay if you're just using the bottom knee part. But as you can see, there's also the top part of the double knee. And when you kick that back, you do get into a situation where it sticks out. There were probably different ways of doing it here. They could have done the double knee going up into the bagginess. Big hunkin' part would have flattened it out a little bit. But here, I don't know bringing it up and it still looks fairly unbroken. So they tried something different and in certain poses it does look wacky, but in neutral stance, I don't know if you can get much better than that. And then the boots have the rings around them, draws back to the gears around the arms, just as kind of a mechanical look. Very nicely done in plastic form. Then there's the bare chest, the bare arms. For the look of the series, I think this matches pretty well. But then we get up to the face. <laughs> I think it's a valiant job, but it doesn't quite match the look. And I think we've been running into that a lot with the McFarlane line. I think a lot of it is how the hair rides, and that's because the hair is a separate piece. The features are there. It could use a little bit more shading maybe, but look at the size of the forehead. I think that throws it off on quite a few of these figures. It's not terrible, don't get me wrong, but I did ask them about it at Toy Fair, and they're kind of, <laughs> why do I leave the package back there? And they said they're looking into it, maybe making them swappable heads instead of swappable hairs, maybe. But at the same time, you get away from it a little bit and it's Kirishima. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck and then a ball joint at the bottom. And look up and down. Oh, so much tilt. Swivels. There's a dumbbell joint at the shoulder and because of this cog on his shoulder, it's nicely hidden. But there's also a flesh cap to hide that articulation too. Rotates all the way around and then comes out to a hinge at the shoulder that comes up to there. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, all the way. Hinge at the wrist and it has a swivel on both sides so you can turn that to make it go in and out if you want. Ball joint at the mid torso gives you some range but there's also a ball joint at the waist. So together it goes around. Not a lot of crunch but a lot of movement. Swivel at the hip comes all the way forward. Uh, back gets in the way. Crank this up a little bit. You can hinge the leg all the way out. That does rotate at that point but because of the sculpt and McFarlane wanted to keep things, I mean their seams, but they don't like leaving gaps, so they kind of butt up the two parts together. Double knee, 
it doesn't come all the way up because even though they went this direction in hiding the articulation, the bagginess does still get in the way of the double joint. The ankle is the same as the wrist. It does rotate at the top, then it hinges back, forward, forward facing pin first rocker, and then a toe joint that yeah goes all the way up. For accessories, and I talked about this a minute ago, the hair does pop off. There's a big mushroom pin at the top. It stays on. It's not like it's gonna fall off, but there is a little bit of room for adjustment. And like I said, I feel like the hair should just be part of the head, but that pops off so you can put on his, well, <laughs> his bondage mask thing. I have a feeling if you do this a lot, it's gonna start rubbing paint off. I feel it helps with the likeness a little bit. Plus, I just like mask characters. I like full costumes. But again, it does draw a lot of attention to his forehead. I again think it's riding a little bit high. And then it comes with alternate arms to show his quirk. It's essentially the same, but then it goes into this cracked, rocky look. It is missing wrist articulation, but at the same time, I'm almost okay with that. Pull the arm off. And these are very, very tight to put on, especially with all this movement trying to get, <laughs> run away from you as you're pushing. Pull the other one off. And like I said, no wrist, but the full double elbow is there. Still comes all the way up. And along with the full costume, I like that it shows a little bit of his power. He'll probably be staying just like this. I'm saving the comparisons until last, so let's take a look at Todoroki. Oh, and Shoto is even better than Kirishima. I mean, the costume itself is fairly basic, but McFarlane threw in some curveballs, like some experimental stuff, and I kind of like it. First up, because I talk about the likeness on these a lot, Todoroki does not have removable hair. The hair comes down over the face like it should. It hides the eyebrows. It's in the correct position. This may be my favorite head in McFarlane's My Hero line. The costume, like I said, is basic. He has these shoulder straps coming up and around, which again does help to hide the joint right there. There's the belt with these hanging down things. Basic boots, light gray, dark gray stripe. But then the rest of it's essentially just a blue uniform. Well, there's this backpack part. Simplistic, but it it matches the style very, very well. Bagginess of the costume is done great. And then down around the knees, one thing I don't think I've ever noticed with this costume before are these little lines, strap things. Or maybe I'm just seeing it broken up oddly because now that I'm looking at it really, really close, I think that X should be centered right there symmetrically on the kneecap. At the same time, they did put that costume detail in there. It's almost one of those cases where it seems like they sculpted it and then cut in the articulation, which McFarlane being in its infancy when it comes to super articulation, I feel like things like that are part of the learning curve. But what threw me off here is one, this belt is part of the crotch piece and that is all rubbery. These hang down in front of the legs but have no problem getting up and away. And that's the same for the leg movement. It flexes out of the way of where you want to put the leg. Still doesn't help a lot with the rotation which is one of the main gripes of McFarlane's articulation scheme. But you'll notice no seams up here. This isn't a new thing for this line. We saw this with Shigaraki but it's a soft overlay piece that does not get in the way of crunching. So in fact, them doing this like this gives you more crunch than Kirishima had. There's another soft rubbery piece under there, but that allows for, well, you can crank all the way back. Hell, that's not bad. What this will do in 20 or 30 or hell, 10, 15, who knows, it may dry up, it may crack, it may rot away, but at the moment, probably for my lifetime, it should be okay. And that piece comes all the way up and is part of the collar too. It gets out of the way of articulation. One thing I have noticed though, the rubberiness of this torso cover drags against this cap piece that hides the articulation at the shoulder. So trying to move it around, it doesn't want to, well, see, taking the cat piece off that is tight against the rubberiness, you plug that in and it has no problem moving around. So it's just two materials that don't like to interact very well together. It's squeaky just trying to move it without the piece in. Going over articulation again, let's see if that pops. Yep, there's a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck along with a ball joint at the bottom. See, it already pops off. Just make alternate heads. Hell, since he didn't come with an alternate hair piece, a different look for his face would have been awesome. Can look up, does look down. The rubbery part kind of kicks it back, but still looks down. Oh, tilt! Swivel, dumbbell joint at the shoulder. That of course rotates all the way around. And then a hinge comes up to there. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow. Shit, all the way. Same wrist as we see that's up and down. You can rotate it. I'd kind of like to see what is up under there. Seems, oh, there's a big hinge ball joint. Back, all the way forward, tilt all the way around. The leg hinges forward, back, out. Doesn't come all the way, which is weird because 
there's nothing really to get in the way, but <laughs> out of the whole line, he probably has the worst out. A little bit of rotation is supposed to be there. Double knee, so close. Get in there. Ankle is the same as the wrist. Rotates, hinges back, hinges forward. Forward facing pin for a little bit of rocker action. Toe joint. For accessories, he comes with alternate grip hands, which I don't know why McFarlane keeps adding trigger fingers to it. I guess it works, and just in case you want to give him a gun, but I don't see me ever taking the fists off Todoroki. Not that it's difficult, it pops right off. Pop the other hand on, no problem. But the fists work into the other accessories. And of course, being Todoroki, he needs an ice effect and he needs a fire effect. And these are really nicely done. It's a soft material. The ice effect is a nice, light, translucent blue, but there's also a beautiful white dry brush done here on the tips. It just puts it over the top as an ice thing. Then the fire is, I don't know, is it a couple of colors? Is there some red, some translucent orange? It has a nice see-through flamey effect. Both have holes for the fists. You can see down in there that this is the right, this is the left, but it's also pretty obvious because Todoroki's right is the ice, his left is the fire. The ice one is a little bit tight to put on, but not a huge deal. You can see his fist right there through the ice. And then the same for the fire, just plugs right in. And yeah, it could have been more complicated. It could have been the ice slide like we see with Figma or a fire effect that covers the arm. But I don't know, that's pretty effective. And the translucency, the shininess, the little extra attention to detail, and I love the contrast here, which is Todoroki in a nutshell, if you think about it. And then finally, there is Uravity. Oh, and a lot a minute ago, she actually comes with a deluxe type stand. I think we saw this with Superman. But given her quirk, it makes sense they give her a stand that lets her levitate up in the air. I like that. And I remember right from Superman, I like this stand a lot. There's some detents there to give it some tightness, so it should hold her fairly well. And for some reason, I love this costume design. I don't know if it's the colors, the nice contrasting between the black and the pink and the, well, darker pink, or if it's the simplicity of these gauntlets and the belt and then these big boots making it very bottom heavy. Like, uh, I don't know. There's just something about this that is aesthetically pleasing. And again, nicely sculpted all the way around. These two black dots on the chest, it could have been just paint, but they're actually recessed in there. And that's along with the separation of the black and the pink. There's an actual ridge right there. These things around the wrist could have been just one bulky sculpt. It's not a separate piece, but there is space between right there to make it look like this is a separate part. The hips and this belt part coming around is one solid plastic piece, unlike Todoroki. Which is a shame because I feel like Odoraka would have benefited from that since her legs do kind of... It's a little bit restricted down there. Most of all though, I'm surprised at how tiny she is. With McFarlane, I've gotten kind of used to the relative scale between the figures not being the greatest, but they actually made her really small. One of the things you will notice though, the lower leg is all one piece. And I feel like they did that to preserve the look of the boot itself. And I think Figma is actually doing it this way too. And the one thing I think about when I think about the leg shape like this, I think about Mega Man. And they've made action figures of that that have cuts in it and it allows for ankles and such. But with this heel back here, I, they may have run out of plastic real estate. But because of that, she is the most stable figure in this line. Her center of balance is all the way down there and there's no ankles to, you know, get out of the way or get out of alignment. And then of course there is the lightness. I feel like this is probably the worst in this series. It's damn close, but for some reason it comes off as kind of a dead stare or a doll look to it. Again, all the beats are there. Her eyebrows should be a little bit more angry or it's the shape of the eyes. Well, I guess the rosy cheeks could be a little bit higher, but again, notice the hair riding a little bit high. Going over articulation, look at how much space there is up in there. Still hidden by the hair, but they left it open so you could get all the way around. Probably the best neck ball joint I've seen. Well, there you go. Hidden by that collar piece, they could leave the gap wide open for all kinds of uh, 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 do, 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 do. tilt, 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 tilt. Dumbbell joint at the shoulder, but how, as small as this figure is, you only get a little bit of forward back, a little bit of up and down. Rotates on that ball joint, hinges at the shoulder up to there. Bicep swivel nicely hidden by those bands. Double elbow. It's gonna come all the way up. Usual wrist, but a little bit hindered by this bracelet coming down around it. Ball joint at the mid torso, ball joint at the waist. Good arc back, not bad crunch. At the legs, there's a ball joint coming out to the hip and not the usual sculpted seamless look, 
but unfortunately because of this big belt you can only come about that far it just runs into itself back a little bit out i was just talking about todoroki this is about the same double knee but not a lot of clearance right there at the bottom so you get well actually that's not terrible and then like i mentioned nothing below that she comes with flat hands in the package and i think mine due to the packaging warped a little bit at the end right there it curls up but she also comes with a pair of grip hands again trigger finger and i'm just now noticing that the fingernail paint is actually on the inside there's not an actual fingernail sculpt but there's paint and then her hair does come off there's a big honking mushroom peg back there she comes with this alternate hair piece gotta get down around the ears i don't remember this look a lot in the series but this clear shield coming down over the face does help with the likeness a lot again like hiroshima I, I this may be her permanent look on my shelf and then the rest of the helmet this darker pink part the light pink it comes up and around it looks great i can understand why they did the alternate hair parts because you try to push like a helmet like this or kirishima's mask over an existing hair piece and it's not going to sit right so i understand the thinking here i just don't know if it's any better than two alternate heads and then there's also the stand it has no problem getting around her and holding the weight the hinge right there allows you to either have it down or flight look because of the big boots does sit a little bit back but it doesn't tip the stand too bad i feel like the relative scale of these figures are pretty good todoroki's the tallest then there's kirishima and then of course odoraka is the smallest but it is still seven inch scale kirishima to the top of his hair is about six and three quarter odoraka is six and a quarter and then todoroki is six and seven eighths I feel like that works really well with Bakugo and Shigaraki from Series 1. And then here's the GameStop exclusive All Might and Midoriya. Deku's body works really well, but I feel like his head is too big for the rest of the series. And then All Might always felt a little bit small, especially his head. And that's what I meant about improving relative scale. Series 2 does a better job of making the group look good. But here is Series 1 Midoriya and All Might with Ban Presto head replacements. Ban Presto makes a line of statues that you kind of put together so the heads are already set separate parts with a little dremeling and a little work you can make them fit on the McFarlane bodies and right now Ben Presto has statues of the three of these that are actually scale heads but I don't know I'll have to look into it again seven inch scale they don't quite fit with the Figma My Hero Academia figures they don't look half bad with McFarlane's DC Multiverse line bigger than your standard 1 12th scale figures like Star Wars Black Series or Marvel Legends but hell I wouldn't have any trouble displaying them with some of McFarlane's Fortnite stuff or making the Fortnite stuff be villains for the My Hero kids so at the end of the day three more great additions to the My Hero Academia line they're not perfect but they are an affordable option twenty dollars a pop we're in series two that means seven characters that we're up to and they just showed Ida at Toy Fair which looks amazing because <laughs> he has a mask on most people's gripes that I see here are the likenesses and I think that's attributed a lot to the hair but they're not the worst in the world again $20 a pop if you're looking for dead on the Figma line runs about $60 $70 and hell when it comes to the quirk effects I think the Figmas come with about the same things the McFarlane's do so to come all the way back around to finish the off again there are several options there's expensive options there's affordable options and I, I feel like with this line it's gonna be easier to get it's cheaper to build a whole family of action figures here and even if you're looking for better likenesses like I said in the comparisons the Ban Presto line has nice heads that you can with a little work put on the McFarlane bodies and you still come out cheaper than the Figmas. It all depends on your personal preference. <laughs> the, the first series, oh man, the comment section there was, uh, we'll see how this goes. But if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe, or whatever the platform you're watching this on allows. Much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you're watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh.